Yeah. Well, it's uh, with uh, great pleasure uh, that uh, the wonderful Millie Manders is back in the North East as part of your headline tour. The last time I saw you, you was just come off stage after supporting Less Than Jake. Mm. And how has it life been since then? It's been a bit mad, actually. Um, so since we did the Less Than Jake tour, at every single show we've done, there's been people that saw us at Less Than Jake that have come to our shows, and that's been absolutely incredible. It's such a heartwarming, amazing feeling to have that that benefit from them. And, you know, we loved, we loved the tour. Less Than Jake were an incredible band to work with. They were humble, kind people that really looked after us the whole time. And if that has, is where the buck had stopped, it would have been perfect just like that. But to see people coming Absolutely. to our shows afterwards is just such an incredible uh, how, bonus. How kind, how kind of empowering is that moment when someone has gone from seeing you as a support to actually going out of the way to seeing you as a headliner? Oh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. The fact that they actually liked us enough when, you know, people bought those tickets because they love Less Than Jake. And we were under no illusions with yeah. that. They were there and, and maybe they also went to see Skinny Lester or, um, you know, Tom Hingley and, and his band, uh, The Toasters or, yeah. Rob Hingley, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, I love you Rob, I do. I know who you are, um, The Toasters or whatever. Um, and maybe they went to see those bands, mm -hmm. but essentially they bought the ticket because it was less than Jake. So to have them then go, actually, that first support band that opened the show at like seven o'clock in the evening, I think they're worthy of buying a ticket solely for their show. It's just yeah. like... And like starting at that early on the night as the first support, because like you've got like the people who are kind of like <laughs> just starting to mill in and the ones who are like, Yipping, yipping, yapping to mm. their mates, but in that moment, you also grabbed their attention, mm. and people were joining in. People, mm. people, I saw people stop mid conversation oh, nice. to then be like, "Okay, we're going to stop talking about crap and start watching that's like, really you cool. And so, so obviously, it's an exciting time to be out on the road for your headline show. Mm -hmm. So. What kind of elevates the experience for you? In terms of a headline show? A headline show. I think it's the fact that people are here to see us, you know, and so far the amount of voices that we've had in the room. Yeah. Um, since we released our album in 2020, more and more people are coming and singing every single word. And even when the songs aren't like, I'm not going, oh, this is a sing-along, guys. <laughs> let, me, let me teach you the words of the chorus. Yeah. You know, people know the words outside of that and yeah. that's, mind-blowing to me yeah. absolutely mind-blowing that people have actually listened to our album enough that they know the words they know the context of the songs people are coming to us and telling us that this song or that song means the world to them because of xyz like you can't buy that and you can't write it you can't predict it and so to have it is just such an incredibly joyous thing you know and i don't think i will ever get bored of the idea of somebody coming to me and saying hey, you know what, I discovered you because of Not OK and that really hit home with me and I feel so much better for having that song in my life. Like, what? <laughs> That's amazing! Thank you for sharing that with me. Because yeah. I think what's quite why I enjoy about your music is that it is raw and honest mm -hmm. and I think so many people, they kind of like pussyfoot around uh, the things that are personal to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas you are kind of like, you know what, I'm going to say it how it is. Mm -hmm. So how when you are interacting with the fans has anyone come up to you and say Millie I appreciate the honesty oh for sure um yeah lots of people have um it's usually that they connect with one or one or other of the songs or one or other of the contacts so it might be that they've connected with the, the mental health ones or it might be that they've connected with the relationship ones or whatever um, but it's always a story of like because I've been so honest about my own experiences, they've been able to connect them to their own experiences. And I genuinely never even thought about that. Writing those songs was cathartic <coughs> to me. It was very selfish. It was very about my own therapy yeah. and getting my own bullshit out of the way, quite frankly. Um, so for anybody to connect to that, that's really special to me. Um, and I feel like it's a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> Bit worried I can't do that again. Yeah. So we'll see. But yeah, it's incredibly special um, 
and as I say, like every every time that happens, it's like the first time it's happened. It's incredible and wonderful, and yeah, I couldn't be more grateful. And obviously, we first knew each other probably like just before you were about to drop the album. So within those three years now, um, how do you think you've grown as in confidence as a band and as people and as friends? So we've had a couple of line ch lineup changes last year. Um, the drummer uh, Alex left to go and do sound on film sets, which is really cool. Perfect. That was his degree, and he got straight into work with that. Um, so Pete joined us, and he's from a band. He has played for many years with a band called Duck and Punches, and they toured with people like Frank Turner. Um, and he's he's incredible. He's played in lots of lots lots and lots of projects. Um, and then Joe replaced James, who left last. <laughs> May, I want to say. Yeah. James left in May, so uh, Joe got on board, but he'd been depping for us and stuff anyway. And actually, I feel like the band we have now, every single one of us has been medicated for mental health problems. Yeah. And is either still medicated or has been medicated. Every single one of us actually has like uh, physical impairments, actually. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I've got hypermobility. Um, George has Ellis Danlos and is allergic to, has major allergy problems. Pete had um, a growth syndrome as a kid um, right. and Joe is hearing impaired. So in so many ways, the band that I have now, we understand each other on, not just on a friendship level, but right. on a physical level, on a mental level. Um, and we're able to write in that way and interact in that way. And we're all really careful about what the heck is going on for each other. And we're all, you know, we're all there as like this real group of supportive individuals who's making sure that everybody's okay every minute of the day and I've never had that before yeah, absolutely. and that's incredible as well so I'm really lucky with the lineup that I've got and so when you say confidence and all that sort of stuff yes I mean the confidence has obviously grown because it does the more you work with people the more secure you get in the position but for me the relational part of the band has been so important in that growth yeah and I feel so much more stable, so much care, so much more cared for, and so much more looked after by my team than I ever have before. And that, for me, is the most beautiful thing. Amazing. And usually, whenever we do our Zoom interviews, we're always uh, um, interrupted by your cat. <laughs> yeah, she's a. Uh, she she doesn't have road? any manners. No. <laughs> 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 so, like, when you are like away from away from home yeah and um, how much what what kind of like keeps you smiling about smiling about things so you're not missing home as much i mean you're never gonna not miss home <coughs> i'm very used to being on the road though i've been doing this for 10 years so this is my job and i understand that i'm gonna miss my home yeah. um but when you're out on the road and you've been doing this this long you just kind of get used to it and like after I finish this I'll be phoning my partner yeah. and being like hey, I miss you yeah. and he'll be like I don't, I was able to starfish in the bed and it was great you know? <laughs> um, but sometimes I'll get him to FaceTime with my cat so. <laughs> and I, I sing a song for Matty yeah. and she actually recognises the song oh, no. and it's got like, um, do you know the song by Rubber, like, Rubber Ducky from Sesame Street? Yeah, I remember yeah. that. So I sing that but Matty yeah. Catty, the one, the one that makes my life oh, so no. much fun, <laughs> Matty Catty, I'm so awfully fond of you. Do, 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 do. Is that on the set she, list tonight? Knows, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've actually done videos of it on Instagram and stuff. But she recognises this yeah. song, so we'll FaceTime and then Matty will come to the camera and she'll be like, <laughs> she's got no teeth now. <laughs> I now call her Gummy Bear because she has to have all her teeth. Um, but yeah, so yeah. all of us will miss our home, we'll miss our bed, we'll miss our toilet. Yeah. That's the real thing, guys. Yeah. You definitely miss your own porcelain phone. Yeah. Anyway, let's not get too heavily into that. Um, but you all have little things that you learn to do. You have your creature comforts. George and I have our hot water bottles. Uh, Pete always brings his own pillow from home. Yeah. You know, you, you do things that you have these little comfort things that you have from home that help you get through the fact that you're missing yeah. your people or your pet yeah. or whatever. But, you know, we all love it. We all absolutely love it. And it, there's no way that we'd stop. Good. So, um, but um, we, we had a little 
snippet of you playing a song recently, uh, just before. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that song that you played. First. Rebound. So Rebound is out on Valentine's Day. Um, it is an anti-Valentine's Day song. Mm. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> um, and it's kind of my love letter to online dating because uh, mm. I've been up until like a year and a year and a bit ago, I was very single for like ten years. Um, and online dating is shit. By the way, if you haven't done it, don't fucking do it. <laughs> um, it's a cesspit of people <coughs> looking for an ego boost with quick sex. Um, and I mean, not everybody, obviously, I don't want to generalise and say that that's 100% yeah. of people, but a lot of people will go yeah. on there just after having a relationship and will lie about the fact that they're not over that relationship and that they're just looking for a quick thing to fill a void or whatever. And so many people get hurt from that and I got really hurt from it. And so I obviously walled myself off. I'm very good at emotively walling myself off, which is a blessing and a curse. Um, but also I made this really conscious choice that nobody was going to use me as this ego boost anymore. Nobody was going to use me as this quick sexual fix to keep them feeling good about themselves yeah. for them to find the person that they actually want and have yeah. a relationship with. So you're not their booty call, yeah? <laughs> exactly. I'm not, I'm not there to boost their ego yeah. and that's a literal line in the song. Um, and I, I made this very, you know, there was a couple of, of people that I got involved with, not, yeah. you know, I'm not going to say it, there wasn't yeah. many, okay, yeah. don't, don't fucking judge me, <laughs> don't judge me, um, but there's a couple of people that I, I found that we would get, you know, however long down the line, significant enough time for me to feel like they wanted a relationship with me, for them to be like, hey, yeah, I'm not actually over my ex, or, you know, I'm not actually into this or whatever, and I was like, you know what, like, fuck you all, yeah. with a 20 foot barge pole that has spikes on it. Uh, and then this song started to come about. So the song is called Rebound. It's about not wanting to be the rebound for anybody and putting that boundary in place where you're saying, if I can't 100% see that you're being sincere about this and you're not being honest with me, you can go suck an egg. So like on in terms of um, songwriting then, how what's the process like from going from writing a song that may be quite uh, mentally challenging at first to then the end of the process where it's actually quite cathartic? I don't, you know, that's a really difficult question to ask. The songs that I most love were never mentally challenging to write. Mm -hmm. The songs that I usually throw away are the ones that I tried so hard to write. So I find that for me, if a song comes easily, and uh, even if it's over a few weeks or whatever, if I'm able to let it rest and it just comes to me, I usually really enjoy that song. If I'm sitting there scrutinizing for hours, trying to push something creatively out of myself, yeah. nine times out of the 10, I'll be like, this sounds contrived and I hate it, and it will go in the bin. So. Every writer is different. Every process, every everybody's process is different. Everybody's ability to um, construct a song is different. My process, if it's not easy to write, I'm probably not going to use it. I get that totally. And have you ever thought to yourself, "I threw this in the bin. I'm gonna maybe get it out of the bin." Yeah, so yeah. I have I have a folder that I call Dead Lyrics. Yeah. Um, and so any lyrics or whatever, um, melody or not, that I have considered to be shit, contrived, too hard, <laughs> whatever, they go into this folder in my Google Drive. Um, and recently I did pull one of those out. Um, and we have started to use it in a track in a completely different way to how I right. envisaged it in the in the first instance. Um, and I think I'm happier with it. And I think that actually I might be able to enjoy this song now. Um, no promises, I don't know, because we're now in the, the, the inception of starting to write that second album. Um, we're really trying hard to uh, find ways to be creative with each other. We had um, a four day retreat recently, did an Airbnb in like very remote Norfolk <laughs> and set up all our stuff in the kitchen and we spent four days just writing together and this was one of the songs that came out of it. Um, but like anything, and especially with a, a second album, 
there's so much more pressure. Mm. So much more pressure. So we're going to try and write 20, 30 songs in order to pick 10 from them. But yes, um, in short, I'm terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible at <laughs> like, running off on a tangent and answering a question for like three minutes. <laughs> you asked me what yeah. happens to the lyrics. Yeah. The short answer will be they go into a fucking folder and occasionally I pull them out and a song comes out. Yeah. Bada bing, bada bing. Love it. So, um, so but the year ahead, uh, why are you, other than writing the second album, what else is coming in store for Millie Manders and the Shit is? <laughs> One of the best uh, festivals to see, we've been to many, yeah. but um, to be at Slam Dunk, get that invite, what went through your head? Uh, two of us cried. Oh. <laughs> like, I can't, like, that's not even a lie, like, two of us physically <laughs> shed tears because Slam Dunk invited us to play. <laughs> like, <Wow>. for, <laughs> for, I mean, especially for Joe and I, yeah. who have followed pop punk and ska punk since year dot. I mean, when yeah. I was, I, I, I first heard Less Than Jake and No Effects and people like that when I was 17. I'm 40. Yes, I'm 40. I'm 40. So at 17 years old, to hear stuff like that on free Metal Hammer CDs, on the magazines. I remember those. <laughs> They're really good. You know, and yeah. to see these bands, Goldfinger and, you know, Less Than Jake and The Skints and Yellow Card and Enter Shikari and all of these bands play Slam Dunk year after year. Yeah. You see all of these, these bands that are seminal to you, that you listen to their first album, you listen to their most recent album, and you go to Slam Dunk and you stand at the front of the crowd with your hands on the barrier and your mouth agog and just dreaming, right? You dream about being somewhere near that stage, not even on that stage. You're, you're not even able to process the yeah. idea of being on the stage, but somewhere near that stage. So to have that invite to, to be asked specifically by Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I alive? <laughs> So yeah, we're a little bit excited. Awesome. Lovely. And in in a way to kind of like um, when you are reversing the roles slightly because for someone's first slam dunk experience this year, they're gonna be seeing you. Don't say that. <laughs> oh my god! That's so much pressure. <laughs> no, but for for someone's first experience of a festival such as that, mm. bear in mind it's a day day-long festival, mm. they're going to be enjoying new music and then as part of that process, they're going to discover you, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's an incredible thought, that's yeah. actually an amazing thought. Yeah. Um, and I honestly, I really hadn't thought about it like yeah. that. Uh, for me, I've just been shitting my pants <laughs> that I get to play Slam Dunk. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's true, there will be people in the audience that have never been to a festival before or never seen a festival such as Slam Dunk, maybe they've been to mini festivals but not been to a major yeah. festival. Um, yeah, that's 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 actually a really incredible thought and quite a heartwarming one as well as a really pressure. <laughs> that's that's pressure. Good. I good. really want, you know, the first band that because we're gonna open that stage, right? We're gonna yeah. be on it like eleven forty five in the morning. So we really no, need to <laughs> we really need to hit yeah. that stage with so much energy and so much gusto and we need to be better than we've ever been to make sure that what they see is set, you know, setting the bar for their day. Yeah. Um, so it is a lot of pressure, but I'm so excited. <laughs> awesome. Well, Millie, it's always amazing seeing you. So um, for anyone who hasn't checked out the uh, current album, why is now a good opportunity as ever to check it out? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I, I could, you, it, music is subjective, art is objective. I can't tell anybody why they should or shouldn't listen to our album. What I will say is that I hope that if you do check out our album, that you connect with it in some way, that you enjoy some of the stuff. There's a lot of different influences and genres on there. And um, we are in its, you know, raw form, we are a punk band. We talk about social, economical, 
um, mental health issues and all sorts of stuff, but we're also influenced by so many other things. And I think, I would hope that there's something on there for everybody, at least context wise, if not musically. So go check our album, tell me it's shit if you think so. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, wish you all the best and see you at Slam Day. Mega sweet, just the tiniest sweetness, which milk has anyway. Yeah. Really creamy, doesn't curdle even if the water's just out of the kettle. I'm Fucking love it. I'm gonna go to Aldi if I like because <laughs> we use Oatly generally because it's, it's a I get Oatly if I can't get to an Aldi, so I yeah. had to do an online shop to come touring, and so I needed Oatly and stuff because yeah. like sponsored by we do not get enough money to be able to buy ourselves breakfast, lunch, dinner on the road. Oh, no. So I buy us a load of stuff, toast, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and normally I would go Aldi, but I had to get Oatly. But honestly, if you drink oat milk and you like oat milk, the Aldi stuff, it's the best. <laughs> I'm gonna get that, and if it steams, the best. Because at the moment we have our minor figures or Oatly, and Oatly works better. It's the better all-rounder to work with. Oh, uh, the I'm Aldi oat milk is a complete all-rounder. <laughs> I can drink it from the bottle and actually like it. Like I take it, I do a shot glass of it with my tablets in the morning, my multivitamins and what have you. <laughs> 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 Such a hipster. Well, um, I'm going to be going to Aldi. Yeah. This week. Honestly, <laughs> try, try the Aldi one. And, and if I, I approve of it, I'm going to put <laughs> spit your sticker on it. Yeah. Approve five million. I expect you to, but I also expect you to message me at some point and tell me whether or not I was right. I, I would will, like I, to know. If I can do, it's all about the latte yeah. at the end of the day. You oh, can, and it, it froths. Really well. yeah, that's it. It fucking it froths. froths. <laughs> Whereas potato milk, it goes into yeah. about four different layers of disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine it having, you know the scuzz you get on the top of the water as you're boiling potatoes? Yeah. I can imagine if you froth it, you actually get that weird scuzz shit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like it's when you go to the start. ocean and it's slightly polluted and you get that kind of flotsam on the top. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I imagine potato milk to look like after you've it. Yeah, it's, you're pretty much bang on there. Amazing. Good. I wish you had And some. that is why I will be avoiding it for the rest of my life. You've got a whole bargain right now, it is 19 pence a carton. Because it's shit. It's, it's, Great. Cannot, okay. cannot get rid of this. That's like when they tried to do, uh, what was it, pea milk? I think it was pea, pea milk. milk. Yeah. Like mix peas with oat milk, fine. You can totally do like a hybrid with peas. <laughs> Yes, on its own, fucking no. It tastes like soil. Like sweetened <laughs> soil. Why? I'm going to try that now. Good. I just disgust at all these alternative yeah. milks. And just, Good. no thanks. So I get going. Yeah, yeah I, I've been rolling for two oh, minutes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> just cool. like, I had to teach that. 100% like, rant on, on milks. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Aldi oat milk, please let me know whether or not you uh, agree with my... I will. <laughs> My little if, they, if we're sponsored on this video, <laughs> 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 <laughs>